Grit Kip Kemboy, that was in Hengelo at the beginning of June. The meeting record 14.33. The world record is the target 14.11.15. And let me put, fill you in on the splits required. It means they need to run an average of 68 seconds per lap. It means they need to run 250.2, 2 minutes 50.2. Winners sign the each kilometer. It's come home in 14 minutes 11. It's a very, very tough task. It's a, a strong record. It's been around for uh, just over 11 years now. And the pacemaking duties, therefore, of Natalie Rule of Australia and uh, Winnie Nanyondo and Gloria Kite, very, very important indeed. They've got to get this one right. We're looking for around 68 seconds per lap. Although I understand, Chris, that uh, Hassan, as she did in that very fast 3000 in California three weeks ago, where she ran 817, wants to go out a little bit slower than average pace for world record and then pick it up in the latter stages. So if this first lap is around 69, 70, that wouldn't be a disaster. Well, it was also the case, wasn't it, in the mile where she broke the mile and in the end we were very surprised that she'd actually broken the, the world record because the middle section of the race from memory was actually a little bit slower. It looked as though the opportunity had gone, but she really stepped it up in the latter stages of that mile race to come home. And in the press conference on Friday, actually, she was rather tongue-in-cheek downplaying the world record, said that she thought 14.30 was the kind of pace that she was, uh, the sort of time that was achievable today. I think nobody really believes her. I think she can go much, much quicker than that. Well, the fear was that that uh, Natalie Rule, the 22-year-old Australian, a little bit inexperienced in this role, might go out too fast. And I think she has 66.9 for that first 400 metres. Winnie Nanyondo in second place, Kite in third. And uh, smartly, Sifan Hassan, with all her experience, is hanging well back off the front of this race. She's back in, what, about 10th or 12th place at the moment as uh, they head down the back straight. 68 per lap, obviously, we're looking for Hassan to go through and around 216 to 217. She's uh, got a big white headband. There she is. You can just see her extreme left of picture. You'll see her come in a shot occasionally. She's back in about 8th place and Rule goes through 800 there in about 218 now that second lap well i'm afraid it was about a 70 72 something like that a lot slower yeah 218.8 at 800 meters after a 66.9 it's not been great she's run 66.9 and then about a 72. well hassan on the inside surrounded by that squad of Kenyans and uh, of course the Israeli Salpeta former Kenyan Lorna Chemtai Salpeta who has run a 219 marathon this year she's been in fabulous form at a variety of distances good 10,000 meters in London a couple of weeks ago 31.15 back to the men's high jump then are at 224 Tom Gale second attempt for the uh, the young Britain yes that's better Beautiful, he likes that. That's really nice from the young Tom Gale. Technically much improved. That's uh, not much to spare there, but the bar stays up. That uh, silver medal recently has done him no harm at all in terms of confidence. Barshim then. First time failure at 2.24 in his first competition first major competition for 12 months that's much more like it normal service resume there he is such a charismatic athlete he really is and the world championships in Doha in Qatar on home soil they need Bashim fit and healthy and firing on all cylinders so he's over at 224 Zal still leading the way with first time clearances up to 224 Third attempt then for Protsenko, last still at 2.24, so last chance saloon for Protsenko. He gets it done, gets the job done, but he's still not happy there. Protsenko, but he's still alive in the competition. The Ukrainian. So the bar moves to 2.27. Back to this 5,000 metres, Hassan there in the white headband. 
in about 10th place and I'm afraid they've gone out too conservatively now it's slowed and uh, Hassan through the first kilometer was 255.9 she needs to be running 250.2 so they've gone out well she's gone out about five and a half seconds too slow for the first kilometer now two or three seconds you can understand but five and a half seconds is beginning to become a very very big uh, deficit and uh, they go through there four and a half laps and uh, Sifan Hassan behind that big pack who are to some extent impeding her because they're I think almost lulling her into this tempo and it's just not quick enough she needs to I think at this stage to be a little bit more aggressive and proactive she's in the white headband there in about ninth or tenth place she needs to move up around that pack Helen Abiri coming down the outside there is better position Hassan I think needs to take the initiative here and it may be she's more concerned with winning the race than she is about a world record but dialing back now they go through 2,000 meters and Hassan at 2,000 there 549.9 she needs to be 540 so she is more or less 10 seconds outside the required schedule and I think for even her in her incredible shape at the moment that might be uh, too much of a mountain to climb yeah I'd agree I think maybe after all her comments in the press conference we should have taken at face value maybe the world record wasn't tempting in the end even though she's in the form of her life Helena Birino you know, could play an important role in this race. We haven't really mentioned her too much, but uh, she had that brilliant start to 2019 with the victory in the Cross Country Championships, and she's done really well on the Diamond League circuit as well. And she's really, Tim, isn't she? She's positioned Abiri where, ideally, Hassan should be. Well, she has, but ideally another 50 or 70 metres up the track because they're slipping way off pace now. 2,200 metres. They passed in... 6.24, well, they needed to be about 12 seconds quicker than that. Kite here needs to just push on. It just all looks too comfortable. That's why there's such a big pack, and that actually tells the story, doesn't it? When you're trying to be uh, approaching world record tempo halfway through a 5,000, you shouldn't be having a pack of six or eight women all looking rather comfortable. Tirop there, Obiri, all looking absolutely fine. Gide on the inside. And this for Sifan Hassan is now more of a race, I think, than a 5,000 metres world record attempt. She has run 14.22 last year in Rabat, 11 seconds outside the world record. I'm not sure she's even going to manage that here today. She is capable, Hassan, of unleashing a spectacular last two or three laps. She has fabulous finishing speed, but uh, she goes through there with six laps to run. I think the world record is now out of sight. I'd love to be proven wrong but I think it's been dawdling far, far too much. Two kilometers, they were 5.49, remember. They needed to be 5.40. They were 10 seconds off schedule at uh, 2K. Well, Sifan Hassan then, just a second right of picture there. Second from the last in this uh, leading group. Should say that, what, about 20, 30 meters further back, just out of picture, there's a second group, which includes Ailish McColgan, who's at the back of that group of four, but they are losing ground on this leading group. And there's 10 athletes in this pack. Hassan, very happy to sit back in ninth place in this group. I suspect, rather than focus on the world record, she's thinking this is a dry run for the world championships. She'll be up against the likes of Helen Obiri and Gide come the world championships. Obiri there in third place has got fabulous finishing speed. She's had an incredible 2019 as uh, Obiri, the Olympic silver medalist, reigning world champion at 5,000 metres on this track. Don't let's forget that. She ran 8.27 in uh, California a few weeks back behind that fabulous run of Hassan. That was an uncharacteristically poor run for the 29-year-old. Generally, Helena Berry is supremely capable and consistent. Melissa Courtney going through in that uh, third pack. The pace is quick up front. I think uh, we've been talking about world record a great deal and because they're outside of that tempo, I've been uh, maybe talking it down, but they're still going at a very, very respectable pace. 3,000, though, in 8.46 for Kite, and that time needed to be 8.30, so forget about the world record now, even if Sifan Hassan uh, ran with super, superhuman powers over the last few laps. The world record is not going to be hers today. Two, four, six, eight, ten athletes still in this lead group, and when they come round... They will see four laps to go. And it's Gide now who leads from Obiri, who has stuck on the shoulder of the leader for the last few laps. 
And Gide, very, very capable athlete. We mustn't underestimate her. Twice World Junior Cross Country Champion. She's still only 21. Took the bronze medal in the senior race this year. And a 70-second lap there. Well, it's just, just not picked up yet. We needed 68s, didn't we, from an average of 68s from early on. Early stages then of the women's long jump, which is uh, just getting underway. Lorraine Ugen with her first round jump, the 27-year-old. Is fourth in Doha at the start of the season, then 12th in, uh, in Rome, based in the USA. The UK champion from last year jumps at 7.05 in Birmingham almost a year ago. That's not a bad opening effort. Almost bang on the money on takeoff for Lorraine Ugan. It's not a bad opening effort. Season's best coming into this weekend. 6.62 and that has equaled her season's best 6.62 so Beck Lamanchuk with her second round jump looking to improve on 6.46 and that is an improvement that looks around the same mark as uh, Lorraine Ugan's first round jump Beck Romanchuk, the uh, Ukrainian silver medalist last summer in Berlin. Behind uh, the German Mihambo, who's also taking part this weekend here in London. We'll see her a little bit later on. So Ugen 6.62. And uh, Beck Romanchuk just a centimetre more, 6.63. So back to this 5,000 metres, just over a lap ago. Sifan Hassan accelerated markedly, took the lead and has broken up what was a very comfortable fact, pack for far too many laps. We're down to four athletes now, in fact, down to three. Hassan leading from Obiri and Tidop with Kip Kemboy just beginning to lose ground back in fourth place. But Hassan here in control, calling the shots. Obiri must know what's coming. Two laps to run. And that's a 67 lap, 67 and a half there from Hassan. Obiri knows she's up against an athlete who nine days ago smashed an ancient world record for the women's mile in superb style in Monaco with a final 800 meters of under 201. And well, it's, it's... Sorry, Chris, go on. No, I was going to say, Obiri hasn't actually run since Stanford what, it was over, over a month ago, so... You could argue she'll have fresher legs, but maybe Hassan has the form. Well, a lap and a half to run, Hassan leading from Abiri. This is when Hassan made her surge to the front. She's up alongside a very comfortable little pack of Ethiopians and Kenyans. And uh, here she surges quite markedly. Abiri almost having to make a little skip there to slot in behind Hassan. That was two laps back. They come down the home straight now. Just over a lap to run. Hassan, Obiri, Tirop, and Hassan grimacing as she comes to the bell. 400 metres to run in this women's 5,000 metres. It was billed as a world record attempt. Instead, it's just been a normal race, one for Hassan against Obiri, and that means a special race. They are two of the greatest exponents over the long middle distances, 3,000 and 5,000 on the world distance running scene. Down the back straight, 300 metres to run. Hassan pushing hard, Obiri, has she refound her form after that poor run in California three weeks ago? Tirop in third, Obiri kicks hard with 200 metres to run, going into the final bend. That familiar flailing arm action of hers pulls her two or three metres clear. Hassan in second place doesn't seem to have any response at the moment. Obiri looks to have this one in the bag. Tirop comes around the outside of Hassan, and this is a surprise, a big surprise. Obiri has turned around her season in the space of three weeks, strides away here, but Tirop coming back at her. Tirop closing, it's going to be mighty close, but has, uh, Obiri takes it there at the line, two metres ahead of Tirop, and Hassan beaten into third place. Well, what a turn up for the books. The winning time, 14.20, a new meeting record there. The rest of them crossing the line, very much separated by that final surge after the last three or four laps initiated by Sifan Hassan. But Helen Obiri, well, just for the one race in California, 
her season went off track. Inexplicably poor run from her in Stanford at that Prefontaine meeting on the 30th of June. But today, the 21st of July, exactly three weeks later, she looks fabulous. And that is the Helena Beery we are familiar with. 14.20.36. And that is uh, the fastest time in the world this year by some 17 seconds. Hassan sets a European record, 14.22.12. It was still a fabulous run by the Dutch athlete, surrounded there by the Kenyans. Look at that strength in depth. Tiro, 14.20, a personal best. Kip Kenboy, Kip Kirui, Chirono, Chibet, Rengaruk. It is astonishing. Rarely will you see a result caption, Chris, that underlines the strength of Kenyan distance running like that one. Absolutely right. And for, for a race that looked in the middle section as if it was becoming rather pedestrian, it came alive, didn't it, when Hassan took the initiative. But Abiri, once she made her mark with 200 to go, it was decisive. And those characteristic flailing arms, they belie a real determination. She had a little look round there, and she could see, I think, at that stage that Hassan had gone. But Tirop still had plenty in reserve here. I think Hassan, in the end, looking rather weary, perhaps, from that world record in Monaco uh, just over a week ago. Tirop still finishing very strongly indeed. That forward lean of uh, Helena Beery taking her over the line. And maybe the freshness that comes with not having raced for three weeks since Stanford. Maybe that had a factor there because Hassan looking a little bit race weary there. Still, though, the times were excellent. 14.22 for Hassan is terrific, but Obiri with a world lead, 14.20, terrific. And the final kilometre for Obiri, 2.41, fabulously quick closing. Down to Hassan most of that, but she had no answer to the surge from Helen Obiri with 200 metres to run. And yet again, the Kenyan star, the world champion.